and I'll tell you right now, it's only the beginning. Street Fighter League's fifth season begins in just a few days on October 7th. I'm pretty excited. You've got the lights of Knuckle Dew, Gamer B, Just a Kid, and many other prolific players that I love watching all under the same roof. I think this is the best lineup of players the league has ever had. Uh, this is also the last time we'll see Street Fighter V being played in the league as we march toward the release of Street Fighter VI. So lots of reasons to tune in. With the league on my mind, I thought it would be fun to recap an unforgettable storyline from a couple years ago, from Season 3 of the Street Fighter League. Namely, the beef between Punk and 801 Striders teams that almost degenerated into a real-life street fight. My name is Hot Soup, and this is a recap of... On Soup. Let's introduce the two captains with the beef. Punk is considered by many to be the greatest Street Fighter V player, period. His consistent top 8 tournament placings and winnings with so many different characters can't be ignored. And he's just in the beginning of his career, which has spanned the entire life of Street Fighter V so far. His skill level is just simply remarkable. Critics will point to his lack of an EVO championship or a Capcom Cup win, which is a glaring omission, but shouldn't take away from his dominance in the sport. He's basically the Dan Marino of the professional Street Fighter world. Despite all the accolades, Punk is a very divisive player amongst the FGC fan base. Many find his cocky attitude off-putting. What is he talking about? This is garbage! Get him out of here! You garbage! You not f***ing with me! Get us two more years! All day! That's all you can do! You talk about me washing people! You don't do this! You don't do this! I've been doing this for years! But Punk will tell you that he loves playing the heel. His namesake, borrowed from the WWE's one-time heel, CM Punk, is a testament to that. He's a passionate guy that wears his emotions on his sleeve, whether good or bad. And for the mountain of shit-talking that he has piled onto his opponents, one thing can absolutely be said is he backs it up in the game. 801 Strider made a name for himself mastering Abel in Street Fighter 4, showing many an aspect of the character that simply hadn't been realized to that point. This catapulted him to the finals and past Capcom Cups. He's also had a substantial list of top 8 showings and has beaten or taken to the limit many of the best players in Street Fighter 4 and even 5. A self-proclaimed fitness nut, 801 Strider has stated for the record that he values his work and personal life above dedicating obscene amounts of time to the video game. Basically, the dude is buff. Probably not someone you want to square up on. Real quick explanation on the format of this season of the show. Six teams of three players each playing a round-robin format with the top four teams going into a single elimination playoff and eventual grand final match. Uh, one quirk about Street Fighter League is each team can ban a character from being played, which is usually leveraged to remove a character that the strongest player on the opposing team uses as their main. I tried to find any evidence of 801 Strider and Punk butting heads prior to this event, but uh, couldn't come up with anything. The show actually hosted a preseason online exhibition match between the two, uh, which you're seeing on the screen right now. Punk came out on top fairly easily uh, with a new character at the time, an overpowered Seth, against 801 Strider's G, who was doing very well on the tournament circuit with that character. Uh, there was plenty of shit talking between both players throughout the match, but it really seemed good natured, and I didn't notice any real animosity. Uh, 801 Strider, you know, he plays a very peanut brain character. That is G. You know, I always look forward to playing Strider. I'm undefeated versus him. So, you know, I just look forward to playing Strider and just making that number just grow even more and keeping his number at zero for as long as I possibly can. So, I just want to keep being Strider forever and just never let him get a win ever or once. Punk giving you guys. You're teaming with the champ. Punk, I really like him as a player, honestly. Like, in a big part, he kind of changed the way people play the game. So I've definitely learned a lot about this game watching him play, and I really like playing against him. So where does it go sideways? I think we have to look at some events in Season 3 that led up to the confrontation. 801 Strider's team called All-In was stacked. He had IDOM, 
who was the latest Capcom Cup champion at the time, and SKZ, a player from Singapore who was showing a level of mastery with Seth that no one else was really matching in the league, despite almost everyone having a pocket Seth in that season, because the character was just broken when they came out. All In actually faced Punk and his Alpha 3 squad in week one of the season, and they actually went on to win 3-0 in a pretty dominant fashion. Punk's team only managed to get one game of all the sets. Uh, Punk put together, in his own words, a team of his best friends. That said, Nephew's Colleen is considered one of the best in the game, certainly in North America. And CJ Truth, despite not placing often in tournaments, is a very strong cami player. But like I said, All In swept these matches. Because of the character bans, Nephew couldn't play Colleen, opting to play Lucia instead. And 801 Strider took the set fairly easily. Okay, I like that. Mm -hmm. Catches him reaching this time around. Headbutt to keep the pressure back to the middle of the screen. Screen, 801 Strider in control. They were talking about him dashing up in a lot of these instances, and you see him commit to the sweep, activate on trigger. Still life Ooh. deficit in favor of your of Urian right now. 801 Strider with the knee drop, the violent knee drop. It's not even a regular knee drop. Punk had his own challenges. For some reason, the team opted to put him in the number two position, which, with his ability to clutch, just didn't make much sense. He also didn't look comfortable at all against SKZ's Seth, and quite frankly, got his butt kicked. The reaction at the end says it all. This loss really stung. It seemed to have really gotten to him. for SKZ, taking game number two. The season one classic and instantly Team Alpha down two competitors. And Alpha is the Alpha of Alpha 3. Punk did not like that, not one bit. Idom closes it out with Poison, the character he won Capcom Cup with. CJ really had no answer for EX Heart Raid, which is an incredibly oppressive move that's hard to deal with. Now trying to lock down Item, but we've seen how effective Item is in the corner, but a lot of damage on the table for CJ Truth. Big counter hit. No, still got to throw. Medium kick stops the dash. That's a bold call out. Plus, oh, tried to hit a button. You're dead. Not quite. I like him contesting with buttons in that, in that uh, scenario. Oh, no call out. You are so lucky. Oh, what are you doing spinning meter to get in? We've seen the anti-airs, and once again, Idom. That is a clean team sweep on the side of Team All In to go up against Ooh. Alpha 3. I'm going to jump to week 6 now. Alpha 3 has bounced back from that week 1 loss and is on a tear of a 4-game winning streak, with Punk leading the way. Uh, with almost flawless execution in all of his matches. This is punctuated by this week six win over Team Nasser. Uh, Team Nasser had Big Bird, his fellow countryman Angry Bird, and Wednesday Night Fight regular Samurai, a very strong team which managed to knock out Nephew and CJ Truth in short order. It really came down to Punk single-handedly taking the win by crushing every single member of Team Nasser, and OCV is what we call it. And this one was one to remember. Yeah, yeah. It might even come down to the wire, right? I think so too, actually. I think it's gonna be another exchange and then the confirm. Yeah. Oh, that could have been big for Samurai. You cannot use the reversal, obviously does not have the gauge to do so, but go forward it, fireball confirm right now won't kill. That's not dead. Not Overhead is the threat, but Punk is backing off. Oh. Oh, he is winding down the time. I like this. Oh, nice. and just holy, that was so good. You're so fucking good, it's ridiculous. That was two straight wins. Two straight games on the side of Punk as we go to the next contestant on the side of NASA. All right, Dom Judd. Yeah, he wants to close it out now. Oof. Another. Ow. The damage. Oh, it Ow, hurts you're so stunned. much, Steve. Oh, it you're hurts dead? so much. Uh, uh. No. Roundhouse Mujin? Uh uh. Not enough. Anything will do it. It's so and smart. And medium kick again. He's so really smart. Good. And medium really kick good. again. You know do the you matchup. See that? You don't know this you matchup. Don't, listen, he used medium kick purposely that close so that when he recovers, he creates space for any sort of whiff punish. Angry Bird fell for that trap, and nice and easy Punk finished it with a medium kick. Expert play. Expert play right there. Yeah. We punish anyway. Not to okay. worry about it. Counter hit exclusive off the craft jab. Wake EX up, EX Spinning Mixer. 
Make him calm down, getting a little too loose with the offense, especially on wake up. Big jump in. Nice. Man, the meter management in this match Ooh. is real good. Again, the interruption as well on the side of Punk. One solid hit, that'll be all she wrote, right? With three bars on deck. Oh, that could have been a dangerous situation. Ooh. Oh, you're dead. You're Done. dead in the dead. Done. And he does the deal, eliminating Team Nasser Punk with the OCV. He called it. Ladies and gentlemen, he called it. He said, if I get rid of Angry Bird, I think I got this. And look at that. The OCV. Samurai going over to congratulate the team still enthralled in love. CJ still hugging. Damn, that was good, though. Incredible. This yeah, feat I, led to a very memorable post-game interview with Punk where the emotions flowed. In between Angry Bird, Big Bird, and Samurai, none of them stood a chance when faced with you. How are you feeling right now? What do you have to say for yourself? Oh, man, I'm, I feel so, like, I'm happy, you know. I had some tears in my eyes a few seconds ago. Like, I don't know, man, I didn't really think I can do it. Like, cause my, I feel like my Karen has not been so good when I've been playing her. And I feel like I actually couldn't do it. And I told myself that I wouldn't, I couldn't OCV any team here, but. <laughs> bro, bro, oh my goodness, Punk, in the end of the day, I've never seen you this emotional. I definitely feel like a lot of this has to do with the fact that lately you've been dealing with a whole lot of pressure from playing online. You're always the best player in the world, setting records, getting the most CPT points. And this year, you're, you know, obviously having to deal with uh, the online environment. It's not guaranteed for you to be in Capcom Cup. All of this emotion, can you explain it to us and let us know how this year has been for you and how important Street Fighter League is? It's very important. I feel very emotional because... <laughs> Love, bro. Let that out. Let that out. Let that out, bro. You know, it's because, like, Nephew and CJ are like... <laughs> good you're good this passion right here this is passion we talk a whole lot about team chemistry and things of that nature this is true passion for what we do yeah, nephew and cj are like two of my closest friends and i really just wanted to win for them mm -hmm. more so than myself so that's why i just i feel so emotional because i feel like i you know i did what they expect me mm -hmm. Even punk can be human too. Uh, watching that makes me choke up too. This is where I'm gonna call it for part one. In part two, the highly anticipated All In versus Alpha Three rematch, which sparks the embers of a true rivalry between these teams. Lots of smack talk, a backstage Gonzo video of a heated confrontation, and finally the ultimate showdown between these two powerhouses and the results. If you don't want to miss it, please consider subscribing to the channel so you get notified when I upload. And if you like these videos, please consider giving me a like. Each one goes a really long way for my fledgling channel. Thank you everyone and I'll see you in the streets.